Gautama, all of us know very well. Uh, you, uh, you've been with airborne programs of LCA, almost every program which I've been talking uh, in India. And he's a graduate from SV University, Hyderabad, joined Bell in 1983, and about 25 years of service in EWS systems. I request Gautama to start. Good afternoon to ladies and gentlemen. Briefly, I will uh, cover the challenges faced in uh, design and engineering airborne AWG systems. So the presentation uh, will cover uh, briefly on uh, what is EW and emerging threats for EW, the important uh, points like uh, spectral coverage, how to handle different platforms, then what are user requirements, then time to marketing. Many of you may be knowing EW is all about exploiting the electromagnetic spectrum and denying the usage of same to our adversary. The spectrum here is uh, theoretically from DC to infinity, but uh, most of the practical systems are up to about 40 gigahertz. EW can be classified in uh, different uh, ways, but uh, the broad classification in, is in two parts. It covers electronic support systems and uh, electronic attack systems. The electronic support systems are passive in nature and while electronic attack systems are active jammers. Of all the platforms where AWS systems are uh, deployed, airborne platforms are uh, most challenging in terms of uh, design, engineering, qualification, installation and operation. Today, EW is used uh, everywhere by every service in all the platforms what they have got. The emerging threats for EW are the relapse, the frequency of uh, radars is extending both to low band towards HF as well as to higher bands to millimeter wave. For obvious reasons to the lower band uh, to defeat the stealth technology of the platforms. Also radars are becoming uh, more and more low probability of intercept variety, making uh, more challenging for EW systems to detect them. Similarly communications, they are extending it to microwave bands from HF and uh, the technologies are uh, changing from fixed frequency to very high rate frequency hopping and sped spectrum. And uh, the communi both communications and radars are uh, becoming more and more software driven. Similarly, the airborne platforms have got uh, major threats from uh, man pads with IR seekers. These are more nuances to be handled. And also, the low-level air defense guns are becoming more and more accurate. With good DCCM facilities, radar-guided missiles are coming in a big way. And the laser-guided weapons are used for precision targeting. All these uh, challenges pose various requirements on uh, EW systems. First of all, for uh, airborne platforms, the most required uh, requirement is they should be very lightweight, low power consumption and uh, low in volume. And uh, the platforms require different configurations from simple uh, radar warning receivers to electronic support measures, electronic countermeasures, and similarly, electronic intelligence, communication intelligence, and signal intelligence systems. And overall, when it required, they, they must act as integrated EW suites. The spectral coverage, as I told earlier, is extending both in low and high bands. And also, the other uh, frequency bands like UV, IR, and laser, they have to be covered by the modern day EW systems. Users require uh, specific configurations for specific purposes. So the system should be capable of uh, handling mission-specific configuration. Then uh, the soft, all the systems are becoming more and more uh, software-driven. The software should be very robust, fault-tolerant, easily integratable with uh, command control decision-making systems. The system ultimately should be very reliable with uh, low mean time to repair and also should be scalable for uh, upgrade provisions. And ultimately, once the system is designed uh, and qualified, 
adaptability of that to put on different platforms is one of the essential uh, parameter. So time to market on different uh, platforms after uh, due qualifications and approvals is one of the key requirement. So platforms like helicopters, aircraft, UAV, and aerostats are the platforms major in the airborne segment. The challenges in uh, spectral coverage, to cover all the ultra wideband uh, spectral coverage, we need to mount many different antennae. As our colleagues uh, from CAPS were saying, there are nearly about 60 antennas to be mounted on the external body of the aircraft. Same is the case in uh, other systems from uh, various vendors. So these sensors, which are needed to be mounted on the exteriors of the platform, they compete for location with each other, and also they compete for location with various sensors and weapons. And once uh, we are putting uh, these objects external to the platform, the aerodynamic studies and uh, mission safety and platform safety have to be addressed. These are very critical. Once we mount uh, different antennae and different sensors co-locate, the effect of the co-location in way of modifying the antenna patterns and also generating the desired field of view needs to be addressed. Ultimately, the interoperability issues like uh, interference from the onboard uh, radars or onboard communication equipment or data links, blanking and masking, etc., these are all required to be resolved. So one of the uh, easier way in AW is always using uh, broadband antennae so that uh, the frequency band is uh, covered. Normally, cavity bagged uh, spiral antennae with uh, different polarizations, dual polarizations are used. And uh, they are mounted into the wing tapes or along the skin of the aircraft. Another is while we are modifying the aircraft for mounting uh, the antennae for one band, we can try to use the same location for uh, putting different sensors. So here is a case where uh, EW, UV, and uh, IR sensors are all mounted at the same uh, position. So it becomes easier for modifying the aircraft and also qualifying all of them together. As I told, uh, sometimes the user may have uh, the same platform used for different uh, roles. So when requires a particular role, the equipment must be attached or detached to the aircraft. So use of external parts, designing the equipment to fit into the external part so that uh, the user can decide upon what mission he is going to go with the platform can be decided. Another uh, technique to get the desired field of view is to have uh, spatial diversity, mounting different antennae at a different location away from the cluster so that the required functions independently can be carried out depending upon the mission requirements. In some cases, uh, however, uh, whatever we do, obscuration from the platform is unavoidable. But uh, these uh, platforms require to provide, these EW systems require to provide uh, protection to the platform in all uh, 360 degrees of coverage and uh, in the desired elevation coverage. So we need to provide multiple antennae and that brings up uh, to multi-channel requirement, but not to add weight and volume. We can uh, select the appropriate antennae going into the channel, thereby reducing the hardware and limiting the weight volume requirements under the platform. So here the antennae are mounted on different uh, tail fins covering different directions. So if we see different airborne platforms, the platforms are of uh, different sizes, shapes, and volume, making installation challenge for every platform. They have uh, varying length, size of wings, fins, so which lead to different masking effects and uh, obstruction in field of view. Some have required power, and uh, some of the platforms, they do not have uh, the required power to support uh, the additional payloads like EW. And some have uh, cooling air, and some do not have, so leading to thermal management issues. So if we see unmanned uh, platforms, there are aerostats, UAVs, and uh, satellites. 
some of the things are uh, already in service with uh, Indian users and some of them are shown here for reference only. And uh, similarly, manned platforms are helicopters, transport aircraft and fighter aircraft. In a typical case where uh, uh, the platform is operated in adverse conditions, we need to cover uh, the upper hemisphere requirement also. So installing uh, a UV sensor on top of a very small helicopter is a very challenging uh, proposition and the, this needs the engineering ability to put such sensor on top. Similarly, some of the platforms will have pressurized uh, equipment base, some do not have. Some will have uh, arrestor hook uh, landing. This requires uh, qualification to very high levels specified in the mill standards. And in fact, some of the platforms, uh, the, the applicable value is not known as per mill standard because all, all of them are not uh, designed in uh, US itself. So we may have to run a couple of uh, sorties, measure the uh, different vibration and G values which are required for qualifying the equipment which is being put in the particular location. Some need elaborate operator interface, some need only warning, some totally unmanned. So they need uh, to be interfaced with the data links. So robust fault tolerant software requirement is there in all the EW systems. Some have other equipment such as radars, communication and EO with multi-sensor uh, decision support systems. So the MIMC plays a very major role. The ability to engineer the equipment for available space and volume is one of the challenging factors in uh, electronic warfare. So as you can see, uh, this is the type of uh, uh, shapes and uh, the positions what we get in aircraft uh, where small pigeon holes are available wherein you can fit the equipment. So unlike for weapon and flight control systems, generally the requirement of uh, EWLRUs like antennae, sensors, etc. are not considered during aeroframe design by most of the uh, manufacturers, aircraft manufacturers. And also user uh, intends to add EW as a post requirement to meet his mission requirements. Uh, that becomes engineering more challenging. Luckily, the development in MMICs has changed the scenario in the microwave components. So discrete super components earlier uh, used to be manufactured with the discrete components which are assembled together and become bulky are now becoming very miniature. Similarly, the VLSI ICs available are changing the composition of the number of PCBs which are required to cover the circuit. So typically, uh, 10 PCBs are now becoming into one. Some of the thermal engineering practices where the aircrafts have got uh, equipment cooling systems, so take the in, uh, intake of the air and circulate it through the body and where uh, it is not available providing forced air cooling. The newer uh, thermal engineering concepts like uh, cold plate and heat pipe design by using uh, biphase bi materials uh, is also very important to address some of the platform issues. Similarly, uh, solid state Peltier cooling is required in uh, extreme condition operated LRUs where other, other methods are not available. So additional power generators, con power converters have to be designed to the specific needs. Coming to configuration, users require uh, course accuracy to weapon grade accuracies then course parameter measurement accuracies to very high accuracies, then broad beam jamming to pointed and multi pulse, pulse by pulse jamming, barrel jamming to follow on jamming. Similarly, interfacing with the various uh, onboard avionics, different bus architectures like mill standard 1553B or a ring 429 or ethernet, etc. These requirements added with uh, adaptive filtering or bl blanking for transmitters on board the platform make the engineering and design of the LRUs much complicated. There are many technologies available. Selection of technology is very important for each of the EW system based on its requirement. So in direction finding for communication signals, it can be Watson Watt or correlative interferometry or frequency difference of arrival. Similarly, for radar band, it can be amplitude comparison or phase comparisons differential time of arrival or rotary DF, etc. So choice of receivers 
wide open or narrow band depending upon the mission requirements. Similarly, in ECM, whether it is fixed beam or electronically steered beam, and in uh, missile approach warning systems, is it UV based or IR based? Luckily, uh, the digital receivers are providing today solutions to address LPI capability. Multi channel uh, digital receivers also provide adaptive signal filtering, eliminating interference from onboard sensors so that the co location and uh, uh, interference problems are overcome. Users require different uh, MMIs. It can be a simple warning and uh, to a very elaborate MMI with uh, uh, GIS tools for uh, location fixing the target and also through remote data link. And also every mission requires different libraries uh, required for a step, uh, completing the mission. The mission specific configurations are there which are like external parts. Similarly, some of the EW systems require onboard data storage and analysis and some of them they do not require onboard storage. This is a case where uh, the other equipment like radars are there underneath the belly and uh, still we need to uh, provide ways and means of accommodating EW where prime location is not available. Qualification is the most important uh, factor for ensuring uh, flight safety and mission safety and the qualification of each and every LRU must cover vibration, acceleration and uh, shock test through design analysis as well as verification. Then we need to ensure that the, the designed hardware is working in combined altitude, temperature and humidity conditions and also is compliant to the EMMC requirements. Then flight trials have to be conducted for uh, each platform whether the required missions are accomplished or not. Then platform specific interface developments have to be carried out so that the system is interfaced with C2I systems. The mission specific robust fault tolerant software development requires CMMA level grade uh, uh, software design centers. Also the software needs independent verification and validations. All these things uh, if we address with a modular design and planning for incremental qualification testing for different platforms and limiting the flight trials can be issued to reduce the time to market on different platforms. Similarly, different reusable, reconfigurable software modules can be developed to ensure that the system configured for a particular platform can be provided to different users. Bell is playing a major role in uh, AWS systems. Some of the programs are uh, listed here, they are not all. ESNs for different platforms, RWRs for different fighters, then multi-sensor warning systems, missile approach warning system for helicopter, EW suits, then CGNT and LINT systems for different platforms. So the ESN systems uh, designed for helicopters are tried and different uh, types of helicopters, Russian origin and uh, Western origin. And these have to go to rigorous uh, sign on random vibration uh, test for the LRUs being fitted all over the body. Then we have uh, systems for uh, small, uh, medium range maritime patrol aircraft and also for advanced light helicopters. Here the different technologies are available, both uh, coarse amplitude comparison to fine DF using phase, phase comparison. Then uh, one of the high performance ESM system is provided. In fact, uh, the bigger picture of this platform is behind the screen. It is uh, TU-142 and uh, a very high precision time difference of arrival technology is incorporated on this where the antennae are mounted on the wing tips of such a gigantic uh, structure and the system is performing satisfactorily. We have RWRs practically for all uh, airborne inventory available with our users. They are fitted and uh, performing satisfactorily. Then uh, we have uh, CIGINT systems which are both communication intelligence and uh, radar intelligence systems fitted on uh, Boeing platform. We have self-protection uh, jammer suits available with the different class of uh, platforms. Incidentally, uh, the engineering challenges are maintaining the contour of the uh, wing and uh, providing uh, suitable uh, redomes. So different uh, technologies are adapted for the manufacturing these redomes while giving transparency to the uh, EM spectrum. 
Similarly, there are pad mounted uh, systems. This is the pad mounted below the aircraft. And uh, MAW systems on uh, different platforms. This is an example where it is on a helicopter. So thanks to the support of uh, Indian Armed Forces and various organizations under Ministry of uh, Defense, like the inspection organizations, DRDO, uh, which includes uh, Similac and CAPS, Bell has acquired design development and engineering capability to meet all the challenges of airborne AWS systems. I thank all of you for giving me opportunity to present. Thanks. Thank you.